Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage my dear friends, Laura McDonald and Walter Parks. Before I start, I have to say there are the comments you think of before an evening like this, and then there's the feeling you have after an evening like this. Yeah. And I, I apologize if they're not really in line. And just thank you to all, and particularly those, well, to everyone, but those two wonderful young actresses. They just, they just mm. broke my heart. <laughs> and to Debbie, where are you? The older <laughs> I get, you know, the more I believe in luck. And I realized it was about 20 years ago that uh, Laurie and I found ourselves driving carpool with, with Debbie, which was a bit of luck. I mean, it's really, we, we, we took our kids to, to, to school together, and that was a bit of luck that led to DreamWorks, one of the very, very first movies, and maybe one of our most important ones, Amistad, and to a friendship that led us here tonight. And of course, thank you to Equality Now, both for this honor and for the crucial work that uh, you do protecting and promoting the rights of women and girls throughout the world. To our fe fellow honorees, when I look at the lifetime of social activism that Jane Fonda represents or the heroic battles that Jah has fight, fought, it becomes a bit daunting just to be standing on the stage. The best I can say of what Lori and I try to accomplish in our work is that we try to adhere to our own Hippoc Hippocratic oath. We try to do no harm. We found if you commit to that, and if you follow your deepest instincts, and if you try to work with deeply talented people, every now and then, you'll get lucky and you'll make something that might just leave the world a slightly better place. Speaking for myself, I, I can't say I'm an activist. I've never put myself on the line to support the values of equality now the way so many people in this room have, but I can offer one thing up. I've been an intimate observer and a grateful beneficiary of what happens when men and women, and in this case a particularly talented woman, are treated equally in the workplace. <laughs> Lori and I have been married for 33 years. <laughs> and we've worked together for 27, which means that given the amount of hours we spent together as partners, it's as if we're about to celebrate our 94th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> which is an experience that's given me the wisdom of knowing when it's time to let the smarter one speak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Walter. Um, you know, the truth is, it, it really only feels like maybe 85 years. Um, and it has been a joy to have the luck of this partnership and to get to experience so many... Yeah, every movie is like a, a new world of people that you're working with, a, a world of, uh, that you can research and learn about. And those collaborations are form deep friendships, as you see with Debbie tonight. Um, she just got off a plane. She got here 10 minutes before she spoke. Anyway, we appreciate that. Um, one of the many things, it was pretty remarkable to spend as much time as we did with Malala and her family, but certainly uh, you cannot spend time with Malala and not realize how important it is to speak up. I mean, we all know that, but you, you feel it in a much deeper way and you realize that it's something you have to continually work on. I'm still working on it. Um, I actually remember very clearly the first, time I, I, the first time I heard reports of her shooting. It was the day of an event in New York um, that I attended with, it was an Equality Now event I attended with my daughter Jane, who's here tonight. And um, I was so deeply shaken by it, as I'm sure all of you were. It, it was felt as, some, as if some new door to evil had opened, that an unspeakable line had been crossed that a 15-year-old girl had been shot in the head for insisting to her right for an education. Um, I pulled Yasmin aside, actually, during the event, just wanting to see if she'd had more news from Pakistan and, and on her condition. And she certainly shared my horror, but honestly, she did not share my shock. 
She told me that just months before, 14 girls in Afghanistan had been attacked by men spraying acid in their faces because they had defied the Taliban's orders to stay away from school. And even then, they had returned, many of them disfigured and partially blinded. This is still occurring in Afghanistan. Um, there's been a lot written about it in the last year. Uh, and the girls are still fighting back. It's pretty remarkable. Um, I, I really learned that night, and I've learned in my four years of involvement uh, with Equality Now, that the members, the, the advocates of Equality Now know all too well that these unspeakable acts are not rare at all, but daily occurrences. It can seem so daunting, so impossible to promote change in a world which seems more than ever to be careening out of control. But women like Malala and organizations like Equality Now teach us that it all begins with something within all of our grasp. It begins with speaking up. Thank you to Yasmin and to Sue and to all of you for allowing Walter and me to add our voices to your very, very urgent cause. We love you all. We think what you do is so important. Thank you. Thank you.